Happy Thursday, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Today I'm turning this piece of apple. I rough turned this piece on 223 of 21. So I know that the moisture content is low in this and probably not going to read very much because it is very dry. Um, unfortunately, I did not buy batteries for my moisture readers, so I will have to be doing that because it's really nice to know how much moisture you are working with in the piece you were turning. But this in here, I don't think I have anything to worry about because it was in my drying rack for quite a while. And then I moved it into my, the workshop probably, I would say around six months ago, and it's been sitting on my workbench collecting dust ever since. So I decided, you know what, it's time to blow off that dust and start turning and see what we can come up with. Now my goal for this bowl is to make these sides and bottom as thin as I possibly can. I have not done this yet. I've got sides of my bowls really thin, but not as thin as I'm hoping I can get this bowl to be. Now, this is going to be one thin skinned apple bowl, I'm hoping. So, I really hope you guys enjoy watching this transformation from this rough turn bowl into this beautiful apple bowl. If you do, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you never miss out. I'm just pointing out a couple punky spots in there. They're about a dime size. Um, there's around three of them. I'll address that later on in the video. I'm not too worried about it right now. What I'll do is go ahead and get the inside of this bowl turned out and then we'll worry about that then. Right here I'm taking my bowl gouge and I'm riding that bevel until I feel confident enough to start raising that handle to engage this cut. Once I feel confident enough to raise that handle to start making that cut, then it's easy peasy after that, right? No, usually not for me, it's not. But this technique has worked for me ever since I started uh, wood turning and teaching myself to use a bull gouge. Watching other YouTubers and how they handle bull gouges has really helped, especially if you have the luxury of watching one that shows their whole self in the video because you can watch the body language, hand movements, eye coordination with that piece, you know, all those aspects, I feel, being able to see all that is a very good um, thing when it comes to learning from other people, is how they're going about every aspect of wood turning. You know, it's fine, you're seeing my hand here, you're seeing the whole part of the tool, but you're not seeing how my body is positioned, how I'm positioned, um, how my head's turned, um, you don't see any of that stuff, um, which would really help you understand how I, uh, as a wood turner, turn bowls. So if you could watch YouTubers, pay attention to their, their posture, their bodies, their hand movements, and how they're holding that tool, just every aspect of that person as a wood turner, that will, I learned so much by just doing that. I don't know if anybody else does that, but this is something to take in consideration whenever you're wanting to learn wood turning. Earlier I said something about chatter marks. Well, I decided to go ahead and show you these chatter marks. And you, you're able to hear that in the video. But this is what happens when you come back to the top part of your bowl. You know, the sides are thinner, so it's got a lot more wobble in it. That stuff can be corrected um, as, you're, as you're developing into a wood turner. Because whenever you get more seasoned, you'll know not to to go back up to that rim again once you got it all completed. And unfortunately I thought, okay, I still have quite a bit of material I'd like to remove off of there. I'll just go back and try it. No, it was not a good thing. 
you learn we live and you learn and this time I did thank goodness I caught it ahead of time and was able to sand this out so I'm very very relieved I started sanding at 80 grit and I went through all the grits clear up to 320. I'm going to apply a coat of sanding sealer and then after it dries completely I am going to denib this with a scotch Bright pad and then I wipe it back with denature to alcohol and then I can start applying the finish. My finish today is Brad's workbench. I'm using a sandy paste and his tongue wax finish. I know when I'm putting Brad's on my bowls that it's getting the protection that it needs. I could use a product that contains wax and it's sitting on the surface of my bowls. I know when I'm using brads that it's penetrating that wood and, and creating that protection that I am looking for. If you're interested in, in having that protection for your wood bowls, I do have a link in the video description for Brad's Etsy shop as well as the link on the screen. I hope you guys try it. Stick around the end results plus clam shots. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. My guest for the end of this video is my husband Steve and my little Ellie. Hi, bye. <laughs> well, anyways, this bowl turned out better than I expected it to. I was hoping to get it even all the way through. And you know, something that's something I struggle with. But I think I might have achieved it on this bowl. Without further ado, I definitely want to share this with you. I'm going to start with the thickness of it. As you can tell, I'm trying to try to get it as close as I can. It is very, very thin. And it's like that all the way through. And my son, my oldest son, is like tapped on it. He's like, Mom, that feels like plastic. But it it kind of has that sound of plastic, which is really kind of cool. But it's a piece of apple. And it's a beautiful piece of apple as well. Let me know in the comments what you think of this thin walled apple bowl. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Until next week, take care. God bless. Goodbye.